After having watched this one video some time ago, M2 Max MacBook Pro, I've decided to change my 2018 Intel-based MacBook Pro to the latest and greatest ARM-based M2 MacBook Pro. And this machine has changed my approach to data science and software engineering in so many ways, I just didn't expect this. Of course, it took some effort to set up all the software engineering toys and I'll make separate videos on different topics, for instance, on how to create an ultimate terminal, kind of like this one, or how to configure TensorFlow and other popular machine learning frameworks to take advantage of the Apple Silicon GPUs. Or maybe another one would be on how to create a legacy x86 environment, which in my case is required for some work-related packages, and it was especially tricky to set up on this machine. Then how to work with multiple Python environments would be another useful topic. And finally, is the spec'd out M2 MacBook Pro really necessary? You can just get away with the MacBook Air instead. Links to these separate pieces of content will appear throughout this video shortly, but more on that later. I'm running OS 6 from 2009, that's when I bought my first Apple computer. And before that I was a die-hard PC guy and could not even tolerate any discussion around Apple. And when I bought it I didn't really appreciate it all that much because all the real work was still done on a corporate PC back at the office. And the Mac was only used for casual web browsing watching movies and organizing pictures in the Photos app. The breaking point happened when I actually brought my iMac to the office and just brute force replaced my PC with it. And I want to try doing everything the Apple way, so no Outlook, use the macOS mail app instead, no Office, go with the pages, numbers and Keynote, Safari instead of Chrome, and you get the point. And I'm not gonna lie, this was weird, I could not get anything done. It took some time before I felt that I could just do my job instead of trying to figure out how things work. But quickly I started to appreciate the minimalistic approach to everything in OS X. And when this whole ecosystem kicked in with an iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, this has changed the user experience dramatically. When the time came to replace the iMac, I realized that I had been using it for 5 full years and none of the previous PC machines lasted longer than 2-3 years tops. And uh, after this period of time, well, at least how I remember this, they became morally and technologically obsolete. They just didn't work. So I got a 15-inch MacBook Pro and it served me well for another five full years. And using that computer, I've learned data science and got my first full-time tech job. I could have kept using it for another one or two years and the only thing that made me upgrade was a lack of RAM. Data science is a memory-hungry activity and 16 gigs were just not enough to keep up with the workload. The next one I got was the top-of-the-line 2018 MacBook Pro. This one, the only thing I did not opt in for was the i9 core, which had some throttling issues at the time. It was and still is a great machine, although I never liked the touch bar and the fact that they had removed an HDMI port. I had it running day and night at peak loads for months. This, by the way, destroyed my battery to the point where it bubbled up inside the body and prevented uh, my trackpad from working. I had it replaced twice over the course of five years. And before M1 Max came around, I felt absolute power at my fingertips because it's just fast, reliable and great for software engineering. A single fact uh, that it has a Unix-based terminal instantly sets it apart from all the Windows machines with their cripple command line. But I guess that's true for any Mac. Two things were holding me back from upgrading to the Apple Silicon. This computer is still capable enough to get the job done and an upgrade to the ARM architecture can cause some serious trouble when working on the projects with strong dependencies on the x86 environment. But as the time passed I decided to give it a try. Which brings me to this guy, M2 Max with 12 core CPU, 38 core GPU, 64 gigs of RAM and 4 terabyte storage. And boy have I been wrong. I was living under the impression that I have a fast and capable machine that can handle anything I threw at it, but this thing just blew me out of the water in every possible way. I suddenly realized that every single action I took with an Intel based Mac was light years slower what an M2 Mac delivers. And machine learning? I can now fine tune a 117 billion parameter transformer model locally without having to use Google Colab or any other cloud service. Benchmarks how it compares to Intel based Macs running TensorFlow, PyTorch, LightGBM and other computations will appear here somewhere. 
Among all other things, the two really stand out. You do not have to drag your charger all around, this can really hold battery even under high load. And an Intel based Max fans will kick in after 5 minutes of zoom call, let alone any serious compute. This one is just silent, even when training machine learning models back to back for 2 hours straight, utilizing all the CPU cores and nothing happens. As much as I was astonished by its performance, when I started to set it up for data science and software engineering, it took me a week of pulling my hair out trying to configure the environment right for the Apple architecture. So I decided to make a few videos explaining how to turn this beast into an ultimate programming tool. Although I'm completely satisfied with the purchase, I have a slight suspicion that this could have been an overkill. Motor Max have a really fast SSD that can swap RAM from a hard drive very efficiently and potentially a much cheaper option could perform just as well running serious machine learning. Here I have my wife's brand new M2 Mac MacBook Air with 24 gigs of RAM and uh, it's top of the current era lineup and it's twice cheaper than this one and I think a good one-to-one -one demanding machine learning task could be a, a great comparison to figure this out. It's still virgin, so let me set it up and I'll tell you all about it. So stay tuned.